Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will talk about the RSI indicator, which is one of the most popular trading indicators out there. We will take a look at the RSI indicator in greater detail and fine tune your view on how to use the indicator to improve your trading results. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure to subscribe and enable the bell icon so that you won't miss out on the upcoming videos. Well then, this video will cover the following topics. We will talk about what is RSI and what are the basic things that you need to know about RSI. Then we will move on to discussing the calculation behind RSI and what does it mean to a trader. Further, we will discuss about the significance of RSI or what makes RSI a better indicator. We will also talk about the limitations of RSI or the mistakes that traders makes while using the RSI indicator. We will also take a look at the Andrew Carwell's RSI model and how to modify for a better RSI setting. After that, we will talk about the different uses of RSI indicator. And finally, we will wind the video with three RSI trading strategies that you can use in the market. So without wasting any time, let's get started. RSI stands for Relative Strength Index and it is a momentum indicator that is developed by J. Wellas Wilder. In short, RSI is an oscillating type indicator that moves to and fro between a fixed set of values or ranges. So the value of the RSI indicator oscillate between 0 and 100. What this means is that you can never go below 0 and you can never go above 100. Since the RSI is a momentum indicator, it measures how fast the price moves. The quicker the price has increased, the greater will be the RSI values. Similarly, the faster the price has dropped, the lower the RSI value. And so if the price moves up or down very slowly, the RSI indicator will be in the middle, that is around the 50 or 60 range. The RSI can fluctuate between 20 and 30 and can go all the way up to 70, 80 or even 90, especially when there is a strong momentum in the market. From a conventional standpoint, as described by Mr. Wellas Wilder, what significant are the levels between 30 and 70? Because traditionally, when RSI reaches 30, it is considered to be oversold, meaning that the selling has pushed the price far too down and the supply is almost depleted. And so the market is expected to bounce back up or turn bullish. Similarly, when the RSI indicator crosses above 70, the market is considered to be overbought, meaning that buying has pushed the price too far up and there is not enough demand in the market, implying that a price fall is about to occur. So we will talk about this concept later in the video. Let us briefly look at the calculation behind RSI, which will help us understand more about the indicator. Now here's the formula of RSI. RSI is equal to 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus RS, where RS is the relative strength, which is given by average gain divided by average loss. Okay, don't think that this is too complicated or don't let the math scare you because this isn't as hard as it looks. Let me break this down so that you can understand it very easily. So as you can see in the calculation, the only tricky part is the relative strength calculation, which is defined as the average gain divided by average loss. So in simple words, the relative strength or the RS value goes up when the average gain is large or when the average loss is small. Now you might be wondering, how does the value of average gain goes up? So it's very easy. For instance, when the price moves up quickly with little or no pullbacks, your average gain is large because the price is making positive gains, which in turn leads to a higher RS value. Likewise, when the price falls very quickly with little or no pullbacks, your average loss is large in case if you are having a long position because the price is making negative gains, which in turn leads to a lower RS value. Now with this in mind, because the RS is at the denominator, the larger the RS value, the higher will be the RSI value. And if the RS value is lower, then the RSI value will also be lower. So the key thing to note is that the higher your average gain, the higher your RSI is going to be. I hope it makes sense. Even if not, we will consider some examples. Let's take the case where the average gain is equal to 10 rupees and the average loss associated is 1 rupee. Taking 10 divided by 1, your relative strength or the RS value equals to 10. 
Now all you have to do is to put this value into the formula and you will get an RSI of about 91. So an RSI value of 91 shows you that there is a strong momentum in the market because your average gain is much higher than your average loss. Let's consider another situation where the average gain is 10 rupees but the average loss is 20 rupees. When 10 is divided by 20, your RS equals to 0.5. Now all you have to do is to put in the numbers and you will get an RSI of 33.34. The reason for this is that your average loss is greater than your average gain. So there is more bearish momentum in the market and that is why your RSI value has fallen. The standard period used for the calculation of RSI is 14, which means that the average gains and losses of the previous 14 candles are used to compute the RSI data. In addition, by default, the closing prices of 14 candles are taken for estimation. What this conveys is that the average gain or average loss can be manipulated by RSI settings. For example, if you choose a 14 period RSI, then the average gain and the average loss will be based on the last 14 candles. Similarly, if you use a 5 period RSI, then the average gain and average loss will be based on the last 5 candles. So if you have used a lower period RSI setting, then the indicator will be more sensitive to recent price movements and it is the opposite for a higher period RSI setting where the indicator becomes less sensitive to random price movements. As per Mr. Welles Wilder, the best setting for RSI is the default setting of 14 period itself but it is not a crime if you want to change the settings for your convenience. One of the main advantages of RSI is that it is a leading indicator. RSI is very often used to obtain early signs of possible trend changes in the market. This feature itself makes it a very powerful tool for intraday traders to get ready for a big price move before it happens and thereby improving their chances of getting a higher return due to an early entry which is otherwise not possible by a lagging indicator. Another significance of RSI is that RSI can be used with multiple time frames, be it weeks or even months as inputs instead of days, hours or minutes. So by using a longer time scale, it is possible to align your short term trades with longer term trends. What this means is that if the monthly RSI is reasonably low but is rising, then a buy signal on RSI is more likely to succeed. Similarly, a high but declining monthly RSI suggests that a buy signal in a daily RSI is possibly a false positive. You can gain such insights when you conduct your analysis with RSI on multiple time frames. And finally, being a momentum indicator gives RSI the superpower to identify when the momentum is gaining and when there is a loss in momentum. We will talk more about this while we discuss the uses of RSI later on. If the 14 period RSI is below the 30 levels, what it's telling you is that over the last 14 days or the 14 candles, the prices have dropped a lot in the market and there is a strong bearish momentum and the market is oversold. In that sense, the market has declined strongly but it does not in any way mean that the market will make a rebound anytime soon. Or just because it's oversold doesn't mean the market will go up higher. This is a mistake many traders make. They think that just because the RSI indicator is oversold, it means it's time to buy. Or just because the RSI indicator is overbought, it's time to short. In reality, what the indicator is telling you is that there is strong momentum in the market. If it's overbought, it's telling you that there is strong bullish momentum. And if it's oversold, it's telling you that there is strong bearish momentum. That's the critical thing to understand and not the other way around. So don't make the mistake of buying just because the RSI is oversold because what's oversold for you can be even more oversold. So if you look at the charts more closely, you will notice that the real momentum usually comes after the price has moved above the 70 levels, generating an even stronger upside move or when it moves below the 30 oversold levels, generating a very strong bearish price move. So do keep this in mind. Another issue with RSI is that it can generate a lot of misleading signals if the price is staying within a range. So it is better to avoid trusting RSI signals when the price is consolidating or range bound. The first lesson taught to traders when doing analysis with RSI is how to trade with the overbought and oversold levels. 
new traders have thought that when the RSI reaches 70 or higher, it is an opportunity to exit out of the long positions or start to consider taking a short position. On a similar note, if the RSI drops below 30 or lower, then it is an opportunity to cover your short position and open a long position. Now it's important to understand that the RSI was designed at a time when the markets were very much range bound. This chart shows the S&P 500 from 1975 to 1980 and you can clearly see that the markets are range bound mostly during the time. So from this perspective of extensive ranges that occurred, the RSI looks like a very powerful tool and the suggestion to buy an oversold RSI and sell an overbought RSI seems like a reliable and profitable strategy back then. But a lot has changed in the 21st century with the computers, internet, algos and whatnot. And the markets are not always ranging anymore. So RSI needs modifications of its own. For this purpose, you can either follow Andrew Cardwell or Constance Brown. For the time being, I will follow Andrew Cardwell's RSI model. According to Andrew Cardwell, there are five types of RSI range shifts that helps to determine the trend of the underlying security. The first one is a bullish range. It is observed that in a bullish range, the RSI tends to oscillate in the 40 to 80 levels. So with this idea in mind, when the RSI reaches 40, it is an oversold zone and whenever RSI reaches 80, it is an overbought zone. The second range is the super bullish range. So in a super bullish range, however, RSI tends to oscillate between the 60 to 80 range. So whenever the RSI reaches or moves above the 60 to 65 levels, it is a very good opportunity to buy and it's very likely that the market may bounce back from this level, thereby forming a strong support level for higher price movements. The third one is a bearish range. It is observed that in a bearish range, RSI tends to oscillate between the 20 to 65 zones. Accordingly, when RSI reaches the 60-65 zone, it is now an overbought area or in other words, it acts as a good selling point on RSI. When RSI reaches up to 20 level, it is now considered as an oversold zone. The fourth range is the super bearish range. Now, the RSI tends to oscillate between 20 to 40 in the super bearish range. So whenever RSI reaches the 40 level, it is a very good selling opportunity for keeping 20 RSI levels as target because the 40 levels will now act as a resistance level for price movements. Final range is the sideways range. So in a sideways range, it has been observed that RSI tends to oscillate between the 40 to 60, 65 zones, which basically helps us to determine that the security of the market is sideways or range bound. So in these range shift scenarios, we have taken an additional range of 5 points that is 60 to 65 because some stocks works well with the 65 as resistance while others work with 60 as resistance. Hence 5 point tolerance in RSI is taken both for higher and lower sides. So this logic of RSI range shift goes well with all types of chart whether it's index, stocks, commodities, currencies etc. It is applicable to all these types of chart. Now we will apply this range shift phenomenon in charts and see its utility. Now look at this chart where we will understand the bullish range, super bullish range and sideways range. Now the bullish range is defined with the help of a blue box where the RSI tends to oscillate between 40 to 80 range where 80 is the overbought condition and 40 is the oversold condition. Now as seen in the chart, whenever RSI touches the 80 zone, the price tends to slow its momentum and turns down. The next green box in the chart indicates a super bullish range under which the RSI tends to oscillate between the range of 60 to 80. Now it is very clearly evident that the stock has given a strong up move during this stage. And finally, the sideways market is shown with the help of a red box where the RSI tends to oscillate between the 40 to 60 65 zones. Here the stock is expected to move sideways or stay within a range. And as a trader, we can witness a lot of whipsaws in the RSI. Moving forward, this chart indicates a bearish range which is highlighted with the help of a violet box. 
Here, the relative strength index tend to oscillate between 60 to 65 to 20 levels, where 60 to 65 acts as a overbought condition and 20 is the oversold condition. And finally, the chart indicates a super bearish range as highlighted in red, where the RSI tends to oscillate between 40 to 20 range and it is an indication that a strong down move is very likely. I hope the RSI range shift concept is now clear. What you can do with the RSI indicator is to use it as a trend filter to trade in the direction of a particular trend. In order to do this, you need to play with the RSI settings a little bit. For a start, what you can do is change your RSI settings to 200 period. This settings means that RSI indicator will look through the last 200 candles closing prices to measure the average gains to average loss. Now to make a proper logic out of this, we can use the RSI midline which is indicated by 50. What the midline represents is that if the RSI is above 50, it means that the average gain is greater than the average loss over a period of time. And if the RSI is below 50, it means that the average gain is lesser than the average loss over a given period. So if over the last 200 candles, the average gain is more than the average loss, you can imagine that the RSI indicator will be above 50 because there are more gains than losses. Likewise, if over the last 200 candles, the average loss is greater than the average gain, then the RSI indicator will be below 50. So the RSI indicator can be used to gauge the long term trend. Now the essence of this is that if the 200 period RSI indicator is above 50, you can conclude that the market is in a long term trend and look for buying opportunities only. And if the 200 period RSI indicator is below 50, you can conclude that the market is in a long term downtrend and you can only look for selling opportunities. Now when I use the word long term, it is relative to the time frame you are looking at. Because if you refer to 200 candles on a 5 minute time frame, it will be a long term uptrend or downtrend trend on the 5 minute time frame only. So if you do this on a daily time frame, it will be a long term downtrend or uptrend on a daily time frame. Now the issue with this approach is the sensitivity. As the calculation will include a large number of candles, the signal will be received much later after the price move has already started. So the higher the time frame used, the greater will be the lag. Now with that being said, this is only an alternate method to finding market trends. And if you are not comfortable with this, please avoid using it. And instead, follow the trend identification method using the range shift concept, which is more detailed in the way it expresses the market trends into different zones. But the idea here is to make you aware of different approaches you can take with the RSI. The divergence are a very common application of RSI. For those unfamiliar with divergences, they are a powerful tool that can help identify the dishonesty with the price action. So it mainly develops when the indicator is moving in the opposite direction of the price. The divergences are mainly classified into negative and positive divergences based upon the movement of prices and indicator. So a positive divergence takes place when the prices makes a new low whereas the indicator makes a new high. Similarly, a negative divergence takes place when the prices makes a new high but the indicator in turn makes a new low. Now there are different types of divergence patterns. Number one are the regular or normal divergences which includes a bullish regular divergence and a bearish regular divergence. Similarly, there are irregular or hidden divergences which also includes bullish and bearish hidden divergences. A regular divergence occurs when the momentum does not support a price trend. We can identify bearish divergences by comparing highs on the price chart against the highs on the RSI. So if the price creates a new higher swing high but the RSI is creating a new lower swing high then it is known as a regular bearish divergence. What this tells you is that the prices towards the upside is weakening and there might be a correction in prices soon. So it may not always be a trend reversal but most probably you can expect a pullback or a minor reversal. Another point to note is that the divergent signal is stronger if the first high on the RSI was formed on an overbought region and the second swing gets formed just below the overbought region depending upon your RSI range settings. On the contrary, if we observe the price making new lower swing lows but the RSI is forming new higher swing highs then we see a regular bullish divergence. 
what this tells you is that the bears are weakening or the bulls might be gaining traction to take the market upside and there might be chances for a price correction soon and as stated earlier it may not always be a trend reversal but probably you can expect a pullback or minor reversal towards the upside another important point to note is that divergence signal is stronger if the first low on the rsi was formed at the oversold region and the second swing gets formed above the oversold region depending upon your rsi range settings let us talk about hidden divergence now a hidden divergence occurs when the trend holds up despite the momentum going against it so in case of hidden divergence it doesn't mean something is hiding instead it is hiding the fact that the trend is going to continue so talking about a hidden bearish divergence this idea should only be used or considered if it is a part of the dominant trend meaning that the existing trend in the market should be bearish so a hidden divergence happen when the price creates lower highs but the rsi creates higher highs now when it comes to a bullish divergence hidden bullish divergence is only relevant if the dominant trend is an uptrend so to identify hidden bullish divergence we need to see the prices creating higher lows while the rsi creates new lower lows now what this tells you is that despite the bearish momentum implied by the rsi the uptrend price structure held up hence the hidden divergence represent a window of opportunity for joining the bull trend at a bargain or discount valuation so i would say divergence is a great tool to carry out swing trades effectively if you can read the charts properly but i won't be talking about any strategies associated with divergences because it's already very common and there are a lot of videos available so i recommend you to learn more about rsi divergences strategies utilizing candlesticks for entries and finally we will talk about three rsi strategies the first strategy is the range shift and inflection point on multiple time frames the second strategy is rsi with two ems and the last strategy is rsi trend line break as we have understood from the cardwell model there is a different range of rsi indicator in a bullish market and in a bearish market so instead of the 70 30 relative strength index we will use the 60 40 range for rsi indicator for this particular strategy the range between 40 to 80 of the rsi indicator is used to indicate a bullish market and a range between 65 to 20 for a bearish market what this tells you is that whenever the market is bearish it won't be able to cross the 60 to 65 levels towards the upside meaning that it will act as a resistance level and whenever in a bullish range it won't be able to cross below the 40 levels meaning that the 40 level will act as a strong support level now this range shift concept can be applied in any time frame whether intraday day, daily weekly etc as i have mentioned earlier the idea is that when the monthly and weekly rsi is above 60 levels thereby clearly indicating a bullish trend but when the rsi indicator takes a supported 40 levels in the daily chart this is the inflection point which is a good setup because the price may bounce back and most probably it will not go below 40 level because 40 level will act as a support so when a bullish candle is formed at the 40 level the prices may bounce back up and you can buy the stock now the stop loss in this case can be very aggressively placed at the low of the bullish candle where the movement begin and the first target in this case can be the 60 rsi level now on the contrary when the monthly and weekly rsi is below 40 levels which clearly indicates a bearish trend in the market but the rsi indicator takes a support on the 60 levels in the daily chart forming an inflection point indicating that the price may fall back and it will not go above the 60 levels as the 60 to 65 level will act as a strong resistance level so if a bearish candle is formed at the 60 to 65 rsi level the price may fall back from there and you can look to enter the stock for shorting opportunities similar to the previous case the stop loss can be aggressively placed at the high of the bearish candlestick where the fall begin and the first target can be the 40 rsi levels so in short the idea is to find the overall market trend over two larger time frames 
if these two larger period rsis signal a particular trend and the rsi on the lower time frame is forming an inflection point then it is a good indication of a trade opportunity you can change the time frames accordingly to your trading requirement meaning that if you want to use it for intraday purposes keep the higher time frames as 1 hour and 15 minutes rsi and the lower time frame can be the 5 minute to check for the inflection point and also to further take an entry from we can add an extra piece of analysis to help the rsi as a trade entry tool and that is with the use of moving averages not just one but two moving averages the moving averages are not plotted on the price chart but it is directly added on the rsi indicator don't worry if you don't have a paid version of trading view you can use this community script named rsi with moving averages by umar oskuru now you may have this doubt how can two moving averages itself being a lagging indicator help us make trading decisions but first of all we have to adjust the settings of our moving average the black colored moving average is the slow moving average having a 33 period and the orange colored moving average represents the faster moving average which is 13 period moving average plotted over the 14 period rsi now the basic idea of using two moving averages is to look for crossovers between the slow and fast moving averages so you can be flexible if you want and make use of different settings like 20 and 9 moving averages also just to adjust the sensitivity of the indications also it doesn't really matter if you use sma or ema but in this indicator the fast one that is the 13 period one is the simple moving average while the slower one that is the 33 period one is the exponential moving average the trade idea is quite simple look to see when the rsi is pushing above both the moving averages from below it is better if this crossover of rsi happens below the 50 level now you have to stay alert and observe the moving averages are coming closer together and if the faster moving average crosses above the slow 33 period moving average then you can look to take long trades but keep in mind that you will also have to look at the slope of the moving averages in order to gauge if the move is going to be a significant one additionally you can plan your entries based on the price action formed for better confirmation similar is the setup in the sell side here you have to observe when the rsi is pushing below both the moving averages from above it is better if the cross under happens above the 50 level or the midline now you have to stay attentive and observe if the moving averages are coming closer together and if the faster moving average crosses below the slow 33 period moving average from above then you can look to take short trades so as mentioned earlier you have to look for the slope of the moving averages in order to gauge if the move is going to be a significant one or not also make sure to use additional confirmation using price action or bearish candlesticks you can use this strategy effectively for intraday and short term trades It is an interesting observation to note that the RSI indicator and the price chart almost go hand in hand. Similar to how we apply trend lines on the price chart, in the same manner we can plot a trend line on RSI. Since the RSI is a momentum oscillator, a trend line will help you determine the momentum direction. All you have to do is to connect the tops and bottoms of the RSI chart itself and trade a trend line break. So in order to draw an RSI uptrend line you have to connect three or more points generally the higher swing lows on the RSI line as it rises similarly a downtrend line is drawn by connecting three or more points generally the lower swing highs on the RSI line as it falls note that drawing a trend line is somewhat subjective a guideline that you can use is connecting three or more points first and then extending the line to see other supports and resistance levels Now when the trend line is broken it shows you that the momentum has reverted or shifted for example in case of an uptrend rsi line which connects three or more swing lows of the indicator which acts as a support level now when the trend line is broken there is a greater chance that the line will now act as a resistance to the further price swings in rsi most probably the pullback or the rally back to the rsi trend line will reject the swing and the rsi will move down indicating a downside momentum in this case you can enter a short trade when the price breaks below the rsi trend line or else you can wait for the price to pull back to the trend line once again and enter at the rejection from the trend line the strategy is similar in case of a downtrend rsi line you just have to change the rules of the entry criteria to fit a long trade setup 
make sure you use candlesticks and price action to provide additional confirmations. Now bear in mind that the break of RSI trend line usually precedes the break of a trend line on the price chart itself, thereby providing an advanced signal or an advanced warning and an early opportunity to trade. Which means that RSI trend line break gives an advanced signal that the price is going to break the same trend line very soon. Now you should understand that RSI is not a perfect indicator nor it is the holy grail to trading. This is why many traders and investors choose to incorporate RSI into their wider trading strategy which includes price action and additional and popular indicators such as MACD etc. But the idea here is to learn in depth about the indicator. Now it is up to you to backtest it in your charts and play with the settings and applications to see if it works for you. I hope you enjoyed the video and if it gave some insights, please do like the video and share it with your trader friends. Please do subscribe to the channel and enable the bell icon so that you won't miss out on any upcoming videos. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, see ya.